Lives lost, people displaced. The horrors of war are unimaginable. And the battle for Ukraine goes on. Russia no longer has full control of the southern and eastern regions it illegally annexed in the last week. And as the Ukrainian army fights back and regains some of its stolen territory, the huge damage to parts of Kherson and Donetsk are being revealed. Many Ukrainians have been saddened by the destruction of buildings and the loss of culture and history that comes with that. Since the start of the war, UNESCO says almost 200 historic sites have been damaged. But what can't be saved physically can be saved virtually. Now, over the years, we've looked at different ways of preserving buildings digitally, and now that technology is being used for a very urgent task, as Alastair Keane has been finding out. Across Ukraine, hundreds of buildings have stood for years as important cultural sites. But through the war, many have gone from this to this. Their architectural wonders becoming piles of rubble. Every day they destroy something really important in terms of cultural heritage. For example, so yesterday uh, in my native Kharkiv, uh, there were shellings, and today as well, there were shellings of the central area of the city. And as far as I know, some historical monuments and buildings have been damaged. And of course, it's also very important to preserve the heritage and also to tell the next generations about that. Now Eugene's company is helping to get high-powered scanners and training to the right people so they can create these incredibly detailed 3D scans. They hope it can be used at a later date to create exact replicas or in different ways in museums to display the history that has been lost in its physical sense. Some of the technology they're using is already in use here at the British Museum in London. They use it to scan objects, allowing detailed replicas to be made or to help the experts to study them further. One of the scanners is the Artec Leo. It may be small, but this is a powerful device and has a big price tag. It costs more than 26,000 euros, but has been donated to the project for free. The device has a few sensors and it has a projector. Projector projects some pattern onto the object and this pattern is being uh, deformed by the geometry of the object. Then using this distortion you can reconstruct the 3D. And then the algorithm in real time tries to understand how to match them perfectly using the color and geometry and then it sticks everything together and you get the 360 uh, degree uh, model of the object. Can I have a shot? Of course. Here Great. So let's see, I've, I've hit the start button. But like... Exactly. Just opening the project. Just wait until it tells you, ready to scan, and you can scan away. Great. And it's going to pick up all the little details. Yes, like these little yes, flowers. exactly, exactly. What makes the scanner so good? You said it's the best. You can scan very fast, and second, very precisely, with very good quality. And third, that you need less than an hour to train a person to do that qualitatively. So it's very easy. So that's why now when there is no time and the war doesn't leave us a lot of time, we need an emergency to scan a lot of objects. That emergency needs lots of help. So another project has enlisted hundreds of people on the streets to use their smartphones. By downloading an app called Polycam, they can capture all sorts of objects from statues to cars. And could we do the whole building, the whole of the British Museum? Well, we could, theoretically, but you know that would uh, create massive data sets and so on. It would be far too much time consuming. <laughs> yeah. But maybe the staircase will go down in history. Yeah, exactly. But the team in Ukraine does need to scan whole buildings and generate huge amounts of data. But how much value does that actually hold? I think the key is how that data is used in the future. And so digital preservation is, the, I suppose, the long-term challenge. But all bits of information are useful because culture is part of our DNA. Culture is what makes us human. Culture is precious but fragile. And at times of conflict, 
Uh, it's our duty to preserve and safeguard and promote it as far as we can. After so many months of fighting, the damage in Ukraine is vast. It could be years before the true value of these scans and the information they can unlock is really known.